Today we're going to talk about this espresso machine. This is simultaneously both really, really old and brand new. It's a kind of contradiction. It is a Fiamina from Fiamma. It was built in the mid 60s and I bought it three years ago, maybe on eBay secondhand, not in great condition. And I had a vision for it at that time. Turns out that vision was wrong. And that's kind of what we're going to talk about today. What I wanted to do was take an old, old lever machine, restore it and then fill it full of modern technology. And I tasked one particular person for this that I thought was best suited, Gabor from Smart Espresso Profiler, because I, you know, that was the beginning of the whole thing. I wanted a Smart Espresso Profiler on there, track pressure, do that kind of stuff. And I said, I wanted to tear this thing to pieces. I wanted to cut in temperature control, PID, all of the stuff. And Gabor said, no. And I said, please. And he said, no. Fair enough. He made a good point. There's a kind of desecration of a beautiful old thing. You can't buy these anymore. You know, they don't make them anymore. What's there globally as stock of these is, is what's left. And so he felt very uncomfortable cutting one of these to pieces, damaging it irreversibly. And so he took a different approach that is, I think, super interesting and has changed the way I think about these things, both on a technical understanding level and we'll talk about that because there's some super interesting stuff here, but also on a kind of philosophical aesthetic level about how I feel about the beauty of espresso and espresso making. It'll be more nerd than, than dreamy philosophy today, don't worry. To get the machine to me, Gabor very kindly got on a plane with this in his hand luggage, brought it to the studio. It meant that we could pull a few shots together and he could teach me a little bit about what he'd learned about the quirks of the machine. Let me talk you through what's been done to this espresso machine, apart from being descaled, cleaned up, rechromed, made to look pretty again. There's a couple of interesting things that I want to talk about. Now, if you're familiar with the Smart Espresso Profiler, it is a digital pressure transducer, and here it can read the pressures inside the group as the shot is pulling. So I can see this is a spring-driven lever machine, so you can press a spring to build pressure and release the spring to sort of drive water through coffee. I can see what pressures it achieves uh, and what's happening in the whole thing. I can also see what's happening during pre-infusion, which we'll talk about later. This has been around for a little while. I've talked about it on the channel before. I've made a video about it before. I'll leave a link down in the description below to that. And a little pressure gauge just for the classic analog experience. What he added was really interesting though. This up here is a Bluetooth thermometer and it's now able to talk to the Smart Espresso Profiler app. And so we could put two temperature probes into the machine and begin to understand what's going on. And there were two kind of obvious places to put them. This probe runs down here and it runs actually inside the boiler, close to the element where the water's always going to be. And it tells you the temperature of the water. When you trap water and you boil it and you can raise its liquid temperature above 100 degrees Celsius, you'll create steam as well. Uh, and that's going to be how this machine has steam for steaming milk, if you ever want to do that. And then also builds pressure if you want to use that for pre-infusion. The second thermocouple is super interesting. That runs here down into, like into the group head itself. And so that gives you a very clear temperature gauge for brew temperature. Like that tells you exactly what's happening as your shot is pulling and it's been revelatory. And up here is my phone running the software and I can see on the screen the temperatures, the pressures. Uh, it's connected to this Akaya scale and Gabor did a super good little 3D print mod to hold on Akaya scales in the drip tray, which I think looks really good. The original drip tray is unharmed. We will talk more about why and how and all that stuff later. If you're not familiar with the app, what you'll see on screen is a red line to show you the pressure captured at any one time. It's time along the bottom. And then also a brown line that'll show you the cumulative mass of coffee in the cup. So that'll give us an idea of flow rate. So while I'm pulling a shot, I can see the pressure in the group. I can see the liquid in the cup as a profile and I can see my temperatures too. And I can save it, use it as a reference profile, all of that good stuff. To explain what I've learned and how it's changed the way I think about this machine and about lever espresso making, we should probably pull a shot. So I'm going to turn it on. The way the machine works is pretty simple. It has an on off switch on this side and it's got two power switches on this side, a min and a max. Now this has no additional temperature control from a thermostat kind of perspective. What it does have is this. It's an overpressure valve. And because it has a sort of ceiling on the pressure that the boiler can reach before it releases all that pressure, it, the boiler technically can never overheat. 
you know, it might get to 120 Celsius, but it can't contain enough pressure to get any hotter than that. That originally was actually on the cap here, and it's been moved, a little uh, shelf's been added so that my cup can act as a little drip catch point and cup preheat. Gabor did some very cool stuff here. Uh, there's water in the tank at the back. You can sort of see a fill level at the front here, and you can see a spring there too. This is such a fun little machine. I'm going to turn it on, get it up to temperature, grind some coffee, and get ready to pull a shot. Because it turns out our window for pulling a shot is very small. So the way the whole machine works is pretty simple. If you boil the water, you build the pressure, and that's useful. And that's your source of boiling water for pulling shots. And that's also your pressure for pre-infusion, and also to fill the chamber to then press that water through with the spring, as we talked about. What we learned with this is that the way that the heat spreads through the machine means you've got a pretty small window where you're going to get good brew temperatures. So this will boil, and it needs to be above boiling to get the pressure we need for pre-infusion. Uh, and at about 110 degrees Celsius, the group head will be much cooler, but not that much cooler. And so as I start to pull a shot in that tiny window, as the water comes out of here, it's 110 Celsius, it'll cool here, but also heat up this chamber here too. And it means that my brew temp might be in the mid-90s for the shot. But if I was to pull a shot straight after that, this water might be even hotter, this group head would be even hotter still, and I'd be up at boiling point for my entire shot, which is frustrating. So as you're watching this heat up, you can see on the screen that the, the boiler temperature is now at 60, but the group head's lagging behind at like 36 degrees Celsius. And there'll be a pretty big differential in temperatures between the two. I need that temperature here for pre-infusion, otherwise I have a pretty weak pre-infusion and I can't pull a long enough shot. But if I let that go too far, my brew temp's all over the place, I'm going to have a bad time. And, and it's kind of stressful. You get this really small window. Now, the basket on these things, pretty small, so we're going to be dosing about 15 grams of coffee into this thing. It's a double basket, little dosing ring, also from Gabor, very nice. And then once we've distributed and tamped, we're going to put an AeroPress filter on the top, a, a sort of a, a damp paper filter on top, because the water as it comes out of the shower screen, a bit aggressive. And so adding that layer of paper is a bit like a puck screen to sort of dampen the violence of the water coming through, so you're less likely to have channeling and sort of harshness in your shots that way. As for a tamper, the original Fiamina had a tamper built in, and uh, Gabor again has kept the original, but modded it to make it better. I say better. It's still not as good as a hand tamp. But here at the back, he's added a stainless steel piston and a ring to make sure that you're going to tamp level and evenly, which is appreciated. If you've ever had one of those grinders we had to lift it up to tamp on the front, the kind of commercial grinders, they really sucked. It was bad. Uh, I don't recommend it at all. But here, I can be confident I'm level and even. I'm gonna have a good time. About 90 degrees Celsius inside the boiler now, 47 in the group head, so there's this weird gap. But as you'll see when we pull a shot, the temperature in this group head comes up really quickly. Now, if you're wondering if the min setting on the element gives you more control, not really, it just seems to stall you out wherever you are. But understand that while a boiler may not get hotter, there's still heat transfer going into the group. So unfortunately, that's not a way to kind of cheat the process much. Though I do tend to turn it off max once I've started pulling my shot, because I know I'm gonna to wanna to cool the thing down relatively soon if I want another really good shot afterwards. So distractingly, now that we're above boiling point, you can hear a little steam coming out of the overpressure valve. It's gonna be a gentle hiss in the background. We might tune it down in post so you can hear me nice and clearly. So at 102 Celsius in the boiler, 67 in the group. We're getting pretty close to sort of go time. Turn you this way, so I can see what's going on a bit more. Coming up, when we hit 110, pull the lever, start the pre-infusion. There we go. A little bit of pressure on that pre-infusion, interesting. I'm going to run for about 20 seconds. Brew temp 93. Peaking about 5 bars, so older spring. It's not really something to worry about. Look at the ooey gooey espresso. Now this is, I've no control over the end mass of this thing. It's going to be what it's going to be. And, and typically they're pretty short shots, less than one to two. With the 15 gram dose, like 25 grams out has been kind of it. But the shots have been, when you nail everything, pretty good. Let me move this away so it's a little less hissy and uh, get a spoon. Now I'm not reviewing this machine. 
not really. So the quality of the espresso isn't really super under the microscope here, but does it make nice shots? Pretty tasty. Nice texture, nice mouthfeel to it. Tastes pretty evenly extracted. It's a shorter shot and you can taste that in it. It's a little bit more acidity than I might want. And maybe next time with a roast like this, I could go a little hotter and maybe, you know, brew 95, 96 and balance it out a little bit. It's a slow shot. You know, it's a 45 second total shot, nearly 20 seconds of pre-infusion. So it's a pretty slow drawn out affair. But the nature of this kind of a brew is that it's not under pressure like that the whole time. It, it, it kind of works. I enjoyed that. It was tasty, it was sweet, it was well made. I can nitpick it, but that isn't really the point, and that's not really the experience of owning one of these things. So here is the temperature data for three shots pulled back to back. Uh, in between, I'm running the boiler in min mode rather than max, so that each time the boiler temperatures are kind of similar, but you'll see as one shot to the next to the next, we go from sensible brew temperatures up to very high brew temperatures up to unusably high brew temperatures. Now that I know how it works, now that I know that I've got this really small window between the boiler getting to the right temperature and the rest of the machine overheating and then somehow having to kind of cool it down or reset it in some way to pull another shot, I, I find the machine more frustrating the more I know. And I worry about analysis paralysis, which can totally happen. Now, I love data, I love getting into it, but I do wonder if, you know, getting all of the data out of this particular machine is kind of good for a brain like mine. If you just gave me this shot uh, and I drank it and I didn't know where it came from or how hard it was to pull or any of that stuff, I might enjoy it more. Or maybe less, maybe I'd enjoy it more knowing that I had conquered a difficult thing. But people love these things still. People have used them for literally decades, despite the fact that they're really fussy and finicky once you understand what's actually happening under the hood. And at the end of it, I can't help but feel that Gabor's decision to make everything completely reversible was a brilliant one. Because I could see a future for this where it has none of the bells and whistles, where you understand it and you've built your workflow, but maybe you just want to be in the process. You just want to make your espresso and not get all the data out all the time. And for people like me who want to play and understand and tweak, I'm so excited that this technology exists now and that it is improving and evolving. But whoever gets this machine, I could understand if they wanted to take it out after a while, if they wanted to kind of go back to the bare bones of just them, intuition, feeling, smell, sight, taste, all of that stuff, uh, and make coffee in a different kind of way. And, you know, the experience of this machine has again reminded me that making espresso is always about more than just the end result. It's about process, it's about skill and craft and all of the stuff in between. It's about endless gear acquisition to those of us broken in a specific way. But this has been a good reminder of the fundamentals, of what's fun about espresso at the heart of it. And having the data, having the information, what well, it's let me learn, and I'm grateful for that. And if you have one of these, then you should know that you've got a pretty small window after the water boils inside. You've got maybe five minutes in which you're going to get a pretty sensible brew temperature, unless you're cool with brewing at really high temperatures, which I guess historically most people just did. They would have been running close to boiling point with probably darker roasts and still probably enjoying the espresso. This will go to one of my Patreon supporters who help fund this channel and help me go and buy equipment, find it used, uh, work with people to restore it, develop it, change it, evolve it into this high-tech, supercharged, very old thing that we haven't desecrated, which is probably a good thing now that we know all of the things that we know. But I want to hear from you down in the comments below now. What do you want to know about this machine? What's missing? What do you want to hear more about? What kind of experiments would be interesting? Did the philosophy underlying all of this connect with you? But for now, I'll say thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great day.